Hi everyone, welcome back to our CSAC quadratics course. All right, so in the last session, all right, or in the last clip, depending on how I decide to compile the videos, we learned about completing the perfect square. All right, now, if you need to see what it was, feel free to go back. But this is for people who either saw the video before or who just want some examples on completing the square. Now, the first thing and the main thing that we have to remember is the perfect square formula. What is a perfect square in mathematics? So, a perfect square is any quadratic of the form x squared plus bx. Now, you notice a is 1, the number before x squared is 1. Plus, now usually what goes here is c. And it still is c, some term without x, but the term for this to be a perfect square, it must be whatever b is, you divide it by 2 and you square that. That is a perfect square. So, this, once you have a quadratic in this form, it can immediately factorize into x plus b over 2 squared. Now, the plus is just a general term here because b over 2 could be negative. An addition next to a negative will collapse into a negative or into a subtraction. So, once it is in this form, you could work with your quadratic and change it in this form. Now, let me just do um, a couple of easier examples. So, let's complete the square. Complete the square of... All right, now, a lot of teachers will call this completing the square, and that's perfectly fine. I call it completing the perfect square because the method that I use is completing a perfect square. You are making a perfect square from something that is not a perfect square. So let's go with the first one. And this one here was one very similar to what we did before. Let's go with x squared plus 22x plus, or x squared plus 22x, right? So we want to make this look like this, first of all, before we can change into the right-hand side. So we have the x squared term. We have the bx. We just need the term without x. So you just take whatever b is divided by 2 and square it. All right, so x squared plus 22x plus you take b, which is 22, divided by 2, that's 11, and you square that. But again, you can't just add a number onto an expression. You misbalance the expression. So to rebalance the expression, you subtract the number that you just added on. But up to the first three terms that we have there, up to the added term, and always remember that you always add first and then subtract, up to the added term, right, this is the perfect square. So this will now collapse into this section here, which is x plus b over 2, which is 22 over 2, which is 11 squared, or whatever number is inside here, you can look at it like that. And this now is minus 121. Now, this is an easy example. We had a bunch of these easy examples in the last video. This session is for us to do some harder questions. So if you want some easier ones like this, feel free to go back to the last video, right? But today, in this session, we will be doing some harder questions. So let's look at this one here. Let's look to complete the square of x squared plus 8x minus 3. Good. So. In this case here, sorry, we have, we this looks almost like this here, but this is not a perfect square. Let's see how. Is this number b over 2 squared? 8 over 4, 8 over 2 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So this is definitely not 16. So we want 16 inside, and we want this over 2 squared to be our number here. So check what we do. So... What I usually do, I put these x terms in brackets. Right? I start off by doing this. And you leave the term by itself outside. All right, now, our next step is, in this case, you complete the square on only the x terms. Leave this constant here. Don't touch that. Good. So, ignore this minus 3. Pretend it's not even there. I'll do the same thing that we did across here. All right? Inside the brackets. And you notice I use square brackets and I have a reason for that. All right? So it's x squared plus 8x. To complete the square on these terms, you add a half of 8 is 4 squared. But whatever you add, you also have to subtract to balance the expression. Good? And now you have this negative 3, subtract 3, sorry, outside here. 
Good, now the first three terms, they collapse into the perfect square by using the perfect square formula. Right? So this is a perfect square. So you make this into x, x plus whatever number is here, 4 squared. Good. And now this is minus 16 minus 3. And now we could remove the large brackets, but the large brackets are there for a reason. I will show you why in a little bit. When we have a constant outside here, it's very important. So now minus 16 minus 3 is minus 19. And this gives us x plus 4 squared minus 19. And that's your perfect square there. All right. Now, why did I make us put this square brackets here? For two reasons. One, I want to show you, and this is important, that we only complete the square to make it easier on the terms with x. Some teachers tend to use the constant term as well, but I find that makes it complicated. All right, so let's go with number three, and this is where things get a little bit tricky now. All right, now I am using x, remember, you can have any variable here, it works the same way, but x is the most common one, and I used other variables in the last video, so you can see those there, but I will stick to x today. So let's go with complete the square of 2x squared plus, let's go with um, 12x minus 1. Good. So we'll take the time and go through this here. But again, what we need to keep in mind is this formula here. So as you're doing these questions, if you want, you could keep writing down this formula on the side of your notes. All right, like in a little working column or something. So you know that that's the formula that you're working with. So... Now, the problem with this, right, look at this formula here. The main difference between this and this is that the coefficient of x squared here is 1. Over here, the coefficient of x squared is 2. Now, I would have taught you all before, and if you're not sure how to factorize, go back a few videos, a good few videos, right? I would have taught you all how to factorize. So, I don't want this 2. I want the coefficient of x squared to be 1. So, what I do is I factor out that 2 out of only the x terms so i put my x terms in brackets so 2x squared plus 12x and i use square brackets and, I, and i'll show you the reason why in a little bit all right now out of the terms in x now you leave this negative one that's that c term leave that outside we don't need it right now so i factorize my two now what that means is 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared plus 12x divided by 2 is 6x and now what is inside the brackets looks close to this here all i am missing is this term here the b over 2 all squared so i put that into the brackets now x squared plus 6x plus 6 over 2 all squared but again whatever i add i can't just add this inside because i misbalance my expression so i subtract that same there six same thing there six over two all squared and you still have a subtract one outside here. All right, so we're taking our time to do this. Now, this looks like this. Yeah, x squared plus bx plus b over 2 squared. And as we know from the formula, this is also equal to our perfect square in this form. So what we want to do here is change these first three terms, or which remember is up to the added term right up to the added b over 2 squared change that into x plus 6 over 2 is 3 squared and now this will give me minus 3 squared is 9 and minus 1 and now you can see why i chose square brackets because i know i had a circular brackets to come inside here All right so now this is the part where a lot of people make some mistakes all right, what we have to do, and I'll draw a little bit of arrows to show you here. We want to expand the square brackets. Good. So what we do is you take 2 and multiply it by the entire bracket. And similarly, 2 multiplied by negative 9. So what you end up with is 2 into x plus 3 squared. 2 by 9 is 18. And then you have the subtract 1 outside here. So this will finally give us 2 into x plus 3 squared minus 20. Now, I know that this here looks challenging, right? But I promise you it really isn't. Once you do, let me say, 10 questions in a row on this, like the 10 examples that I would have given all this so far, once you do those in a row, you're going to get it out. 
right? So let's go on to our number four now. Let's see if I can get hopefully two more inside. All right, so let's move in the formula here because we keep in track of that formula. All right, so let's go again. Let's go with um, 5x squared minus um, 20x plus 3. And so we want to complete this square here. We want to rewrite this as this. Now, 2 is definitely not a half of 20 squared. So this is not a perfect square. All right? So once it's not a perfect square, we want to make it into a perfect square. How do we do that? First of all, look at the formula. We need a to be 1. So to do that, you factor out 5. You put square brackets around the x terms. x squared minus. So 20 divided by 5 is 4x plus 2. If you can't remember how to factorize, feel free to fall back into some of the earlier sessions. Now, on the inner term, on the inner terms, on the x terms, you complete the square using this formula. So 5 into x squared minus 4x. A half of 4, a half of minus 4 is minus 2. Squared, you add that. And then you also subtract that same to the balance of the expression. And then we have this plus 2 lying around outside here. Now, on these first three terms, it is now of the form of the perfect squared because this is minus 4 and 2. This is this. x squared plus bx, b is minus 4 plus minus 4 and 2 squared. So that could collapse into x, a half of minus 4 is minus 2 squared. My negative 2 squared is positive 4. And then you have this minus outside here. This will give us minus 4 plus 2. Now, if we follow this technique here, you have to multiply 5 by the brackets. Give us 5 into x minus 2 squared. 5 by negative 4 is negative 20 plus 2. And lastly, now negative 20 plus 2 is negative 18. And that's the answer here. We have now successfully completed the perfect square because we now have this written as a perfect square. All right, so let me see if I have time to do one more little bit of a challenge in one. And because I know it's fractions that people start to get some problems with, right? So let's put this formula across here. All right, um, and we will go into number five. All right, so let's start off with, let's go with 3x squared. And go to 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. Good, so again, we factor out 2. To factorize 2, it means to divide both of the, the x terms by 2. We only factor out of the x terms only. Leave that constant by itself. So 2 into 2x two squared divided by 2 is x squared plus 3 divided by 2 is 3 over 2x. Right, because we withdraw that 2. Now this inside here is of this form. Right, well the first two terms at least. Now, what we need to do, we need to get the term by itself, the term without x. How do we get that term without x? You find a half of 3 over 2. A half of 3 over 2 is 3 over 4 squared. But you also subtract that 3 over 4 squared. And then you subtract 1 from everything because you still have that 1 outside. The first three terms break down into the perfect square. So it becomes x plus a half of 3 over 2 is 3 over 4 squared, or you could watch whatever number is in here, minus 3 over 4 squared, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, subtract 1, and now you expand 2 by the brackets is 2 into x plus 3 quarters squared, 2 by minus 9 over 16 is minus 9 over 8, right, and I'm going to show you why 2 into 9 over 16 the 2 and the 16 will cancel to give you 9 over 8 minus 1. Now, 9 over 8 minus 9 over 8, this is minus 1 on 1 8 minus 1, will give you minus 9 and 2 8. Right? Or, what you could do is take this to be minus 17 over 8. So, I'll do one more video with perfect square for you all after this. And do some of these harder ones and surely a nice little technique that I use to subtract fractions here. So in the next video, it's just some harder um, versions of this. So until then, I'll see you all and take care.